My name is Clifton Donegal, and I'm an instructor here at the College of Carpenters and Allied Trades. I'm going to show you around the scissor lift today. So in order for you to operate the machine safely, you must understand that a visual inspection is critical and also operational checks are critical. This will enable you to be able to understand the machine before you operate it. So the visual inspection begins with our ensuring that the safety manual is in the weatherproof box along with operator's responsibility manual and of course our annual inspection sheet. Uh, once that's there, then we can continue our visual inspection. This is an inspection sheet and we are going to go through and follow the sheet and check off whatever the relevant um, inspection requires. Typically, I will start in, this is actually called the um, entrance side of the vehicle. So when I inspect, I want you to inspect everything in this area. So we're looking at things like guardrail, which is metal. So we're looking for things like cracks, dents, anything that could indicate that the material was stressed or that there could be potential problems along the, the, the way. We check our labels. We want to make sure that our labels are legible. Right now, this is a very good example of labels that are on their way to being completely illegible. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down. We're looking at the ladder. The ladder is a critical part. It helps you to access. Okay, you want to make sure that the ladder, ladder is in good condition, right? No dents, no cracks, right? You want to make sure that all the parts in terms of if there's a loose bolt, if there's anything that looks out of place, then it will alert you to anything that is wrong with the machine. We want to make sure that this gate works, right? This is a critical part of the machine as well. On this side, we're going to be inspecting the guardrails on this side as well. We're also going to be inspecting the wheels. We want to make sure that the wheels are in good condition, there's no chunks missing, and all the lug bolts are in place and tightened. Here we have the battery compartment, and when we open the battery compartment, we're looking for things like the connection at the terminals. We want to make sure there's no excessive corrosion. We also want to make sure that the fluid inside the battery is up to par and the, the battery is not dry. Okay, we also want to check to make sure that the uh, charger is in good condition. Okay, so we're going to close this. Again, we want to make sure all our labels are intact. We want to make sure that all our guardrails, wells, no, no dents, no cracks in the wells, and all that. Okay, we check each wheel, making sure that each lug nut is in place, and of course, that they're tight. Okay, uh, coming along on the front of the machine, we will look at all the parts. We're looking at the scissor assembly. We're looking at the, um, making sure that the guardrail is good. And of course, that the rollers are in good condition. All right, looking on, this is called the hydraulic compartment of the machine. And this controls the hydraulics. We check to see if there are any leaks. Make sure that the hydraulic uh, fluid level is where it needs to be. And also, we're checking to see that the fluid is nice and clear, not any way cloudy, not contaminated, not looking bad, right? Also, here is our hour meter reading glass. And of course, once I lift up this electrical panel, I'm looking at the motor, I'm looking at the pump, and I'm looking at other pieces of equipment where they're likely gonna be leaks. Okay, so we close this down. Uh, this is also an opportunity to just look underneath, make sure we check the tie rod here, make sure that everything is good. Okay, I'm gonna close this. To complete our inspection, we have 
um, this one rod, and this is our uh, emergency lowering access rod. This works in tandem with our uh, emergency lowering valve right here. Uh, in order to complete the visual inspection, we actually have to start operating the machine so that once it opens up, we can complete our visual inspection by looking at parts that are now practically not visible. So the next thing we're gonna look at now is the operational inspection. We're gonna test all our base control switches. So to start off, we have the main power disconnect switch, which cuts all power to the machine. Right? We have the on-off switch that actually controls the power, and we also have the up-down switch that elevates and lowers the machine. And of course, we have our emergency stop button. We turn our main power disconnect switch on, and of course, we're gonna pull our emergency stop switch up. Now, as you notice, the emergency stop switch does not have any indication of power. When there's power, there is a red light displayed here. For this to happen, I now have to check the upper platform emergency stop switch. Once I turn it on, then you will see power. So that's one way of testing to make sure that they both work, right? So now, by turning off the main power disconnect switch, the light goes out, and turning on, it comes on. So that's one way of testing my main power disconnect switch. As well, that emergency stop, the light works, okay? So now, I'm gonna test the actual raise and lower switch. For that to happen, I have to keep the key switch on and go up. I come down a little bit, make sure that it works, and then I go up. Okay, so what I just did was I tested the emergency stop. By pushing the emergency stop, nothing happened. Now I can try that same operation with the emergency stop off and you will see nothing works. So that means my emergency stop is doing what it's supposed to do. So once that is done, I've raised and I've lowered. Notice as I was raising, I was looking up. You have to make sure that you know what's above you. If you're sending the machine up, you gotta make sure that the area is clear. So now, I'm gonna complete the visual inspection. First, we're looking at limit switches. These limit switches will control, one, the speed, and it will also control the pothole protection device, right? So we have three switches. Always ensure that these switches are in place and they've not been tampered with. We're looking at each and, each and every one of these bumpers, and this is to prevent metal-to-metal -metal contact, so they must be in place. We're looking at these spreaders, making sure that they're in place. As usual, when we check the metal, we're checking for dents, we're checking for wells to make sure that there are no cracks, there are no dents, there are nothing to indicate that the machine has been damaged. We're looking at the two jacks, make sure that there are no leaks. As we walk around the machine, there is a roller that rolls along the bed of the machine. We wanna make sure that the path is clear. And of course, we wanna make sure that everything is looking good. All pins in place, all bumpers in place. The underside of the platform is in good condition and everything so far looks great. Do not reach inside the machine right, for any reason, because things can fail. So we wanna make sure if we're gonna do any kind of reaching in the machine, we are gonna lower it to a certain point where we engage the maintenance support bar. So we lower it low enough so that we're able to get the maintenance support bar out, right? And then, we slowly lower it, very slowly. Now 
Now that this support bar is in place, this maintenance support bar, any maintenance that needs to go on can be done and without the risk of this collapsing. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our emergency lowering. Because in the event that the operator is unable to operate the machine from uh, above on the platform for whatever reason, maybe he has gotten incapacitated, whatever it is, then he needs somebody to be able to lower it from the base. Now every test such as this requires that the main power disconnect switch is off. The next thing is to locate our emergency lowering access rod and inside the rod there's a little pin and that pin engages with two relief valve on the end of each jack. Turn anti-clockwise and that releases the first jack and the next one, same thing, make sure it engages and we turn anti-clockwise and that disengages. So now what that bypass valve does is it transfers all the power to this emergency lowering knob, okay? So, with my hands clear, both hands, I wanna make sure that I pull like this and it comes down. So once we verify that this is coming down, um, that will be good enough for us to see that it's operating as it should. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to re-engage these valves and like so and like so and we replace the emergency lowering access rod put it back and then we can proceed to lower the machine all the way. One of the things we have to do in our inspections is uh, we have to make sure that the freewheeling works. So to do this, we're actually gonna start off by making sure that the machine is on a fairly level surface. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chalk the wheels. We chalk the wheels diagonally across from each other, one in the rear, one in the front, making sure that they're in position. Our next step is to make sure that our main power disconnect switch is off, is in the off position. Then we're gonna proceed to release these brake pins. Uh, the way this brake works is that it hydraulically releases a pin that locks inside the wheel. We have to use a wrench and we have to release those pins. So this on the right gets released and on the left, gets released. Once these have been released, now we're gonna release the freewheeling uh, valve and what that does is it allows us to push it freely. We move this and we move this chuck and we will be able to push it, okay? Now this is fairly a fairly light machine. Obviously, the bigger machines will require more power to move it. Now we're gonna put back the machine in its original operating position. So we first, we start with closing this freewheeling knob, and then we're gonna release this and release the brake locking pin and it's back to its original position. 
Now, different machines will have different methods and different procedures, but uh, this is where you have to make sure that you read the manual to ensure that you're doing the correct procedure. So we are gonna switch to platform uh, function. So before we go up, we gotta make sure that that switch occurs and we gotta turn our function switch up to platform. Then we will proceed to go up, making sure that we are maintaining three point contact as we go up. And I'm going to be tied off here. We're now into our platform console check. So we just want to make sure that our emergency stop button works, our uh, joystick works, all our toggle switches work. And of course, we want to make sure that our horn works. When we're coming down, we want to make sure that we sound our horn. And of course, when we're navigating, we want to make sure that our horn functions uh, well. We need to perform a couple of um, uh, operational tests and the first of which is going to be the steer. So we make sure that the wheel actually turns and then we do our drive function test. So we look forward and we drive forward and we reverse and this tells us that the brake works, the drive forward works, reverse works and the steer function works. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be testing the elevating function. Notice I deliberately looked up simply because I want to make sure that there are no obstacles. I will switch to my lift function and I will now proceed to go up. Now what I do is when I'm testing the up down I tend to go up just a very short distance and then go down. In the event that the down doesn't work then I'm not too far up. So now I'm gonna go all the way up looking up making sure that we're good looking all the way around okay so now I know this works so now driving while elevated as I mentioned earlier we have what are called limit switches attached to this and these limit switches cut the speed of this machine to one-tenth the original speed so that while you're elevated you don't go too fast and make the machine unstable. So that's what I'm going to be testing now. Reverse. And that there tells me that my machine has slowed down substantially. And the next thing I'd like to test is my two pothole protection device. And the pothole protection device, it basically reduces the ground clearance. They're located on either side of the machine. What they do is they substantially reduces the ground clearance from about three and a half inches to about three quarters of an inch. That way, if you're driving while elevated and the machine happens to drop in a pothole or drop in some kind of recession, it doesn't mean that the machine is gonna turn over because it will only drop this much. So in order to test the a pothole protection device, I've had a piece of two by four placed under and as I go up, what that will do is create an obstruction and prevent the arm from folding all the way down. If that happens, you should not be able to drive the machine while elevated. So let's check that. Yeah. 
So now I'm switching to drive mode and then I'm gonna try to drive. Nothing happens forward, nothing happens in reverse, okay? So that means that this uh, pothole protection device does what it's supposed to do. Sometimes we are working in, in, in places where we have to extend our platform. It has three pins on each side. We pull the appropriate pins um, and then we just step back and push it forward, right? So what should happen, it should be easy, it should be sliding easily out and um, be able to slide back. While you're elevated, do not drive with it extended unless you have to. You really wanna make sure that whatever obstacle you encountered so that you have to extend it, before you get down, you retract it, back it in, in its original position, and of course, put back the pin where they belong. And just like that. That's it. Now, once all your function tests are completed and you are uh, getting off the machine, you gotta make sure that you are actually facing the ladder and you come down the opposite way you came up. Still three point contact and facing the ladder. In conclusion, function tests are designed to discover any malfunction that exists in the machine before the operator starts operating it. The operator must understand and follow step-by-step -step instructions to test all era platform functions.